Four-wheel drivers come out to the Simpson Desert in their droves every year. And I mean, for good reason, it's one of the best places to do desert driving in Australia. Most take the French line from Birdsville or all the way to Mount Dare, east to west, or vice versa. But there's another option, and it's called the Hay River Track. And it starts just here, near Popple Corner, and it runs all the way up to the north at the Plenty Highway, roughly 350 k's east of Alice Springs. Now here it's really good, and it's a great alternative crossing to the Simpson Desert with maybe less crowds. So I'm keen to go check it out. Let's go have a look. Let's backtrack a second though. Last time we left you, we had just made it into Birdsville after our Outback pub crawl from issue 24. After enjoying the Big Red Bash, we pushed on to our next adventure, the Hay River Track. But the adventure started before we even left town. I've always said it um, pays to keep a close eye on your car and I think I've dodged a pretty major bullet here this morning. Just um, pulled up at the roadhouse here to fuel up and. Thought I'd pop the bonnet just to see how the, the old motor's going and I've actually got a really bad leak on this at the moment. Um, it's, I've got oil pretty much pissing out of the front of the engine um, and there's not much on the dipstick either at all. So if I sort of kept on driving, I probably would have seized this motor. Um, it is running all right. I've ducked into the shop, got myself some fresh oil and some degreaser there. I um, should be able to do a little repair and get it sealed up again. Um, fingers crossed, hopefully it'll be all right. Complete disclosure here, the repair I tried didn't work. The sealant was the wrong type and it didn't have enough time to really set. So I thought I'd drop the Defender off to someone who actually knows what they're doing. Barnsey at the Birdsville Roadhouse. He had it repaired quickly, with the right gear and the right knowledge. And all I had to do was wait overnight. After the work was done, we had a quick interview with Peter Barnes to find out a bit more about the Birdsville mechanic. Yeah, I'm uh, Barnsey, uh, Peter Barnes. I live in Birdsville and uh, we do the repairs, tyres and uh, desert recoveries and what have you and run the Birdsville Roadhouse. I've been here for uh, 20 years um, in a couple of stints. I had uh, come here in 80, 1984 and I had a 10-year break out of the place between uh, 96 and whenever, uh, 2004. I'm from Millicent uh, near Mount Gambia. I was looking for a job and a mate of mine said you'll get a job tomorrow as a cattle station mechanic at uh, Cameron Downs at Baduri. So I said I'll ring the manager tomorrow. So I went up there in about 1982 yeah, yeah. and I loved it. And then uh, the bloke who owned Cameron Downs owns this place and I said you ever thought of getting a workshop going in Birdsville? And uh, oh, you know, I don't know. And I went home for 18 months and uh, come back and I uh, went back to the same cattle station for seven months and uh, that job come to a close and uh, and he said, this bloke said to the owner, said, what about the workshop idea in Birdsville? I said, oh, I've got nothing else to do. So uh, let's go. So we started in an old shed in the back street in Birdsville and first mechanic ever to set up a workshop in Birdsville. I, I think I like the remoteness. Uh, there's a certain beauty. I think there's a certain beauty though wherever you live. Um, so you just got to accept that. But, well, years ago we used to do all those recoveries like tight thing, not in the desert. There wasn't much traffic in the desert years ago. But um, we used to do the road stuff with car trailers. And no, no, when I come back here, so I'm not doing car trailers. So we've got tilt trays now, and including that one with the, that runs in the desert. So we don't, we don't use it much, but on those jobs where you need that vehicle, well, I've got one. So um, it's handy. Yeah, I get to run a few times a year. I, I try not to use it, but. Uh, when you got to go, you got to go. Uh, it's an M A N Cat, K A T. It's an ex German Army bullet carrier. I bought it in Australia in 1995, um, which had been imported. We converted it to right hand drive ourselves. Uh, I left here in Birdsville in 1996 in it with a mobile home on the back. And when we came back to Birdsville, I said, right, throw the mobile home away and put a tilt tray on it, I thought it can make some money now for it for me instead of costing me. 
Yeah, make sure your vehicle's properly up to scratch before you leave home. Uh, well, don't overload it for a start. Drive it accordingly to the, you know, I mean, drive to the conditions, but that's hard. I mean, people have been told that a few times. And if you do that, I mean, uh, uh, you, you, should, you should be okay, you know. Um, I used to say people bought everything except the kitchen sink, and now I say they bring it including the kitchen sink. Well, when you get to bent chassis in twin cabs in the desert, and it's not always overloading. Um, it's more, yeah, I don't know what I don't know what causes some of it, honestly, because we get such a huge array of uh, problems. So it's everything. Um, you just all you got to do is hit the wrong bump at the wrong speed at the wrong time, and it's done the damage in you. You know, and that could happen to anybody, but uh, so you just. I don't know. Oh, I might give it a go for another couple of years. I shouldn't say that on TV because I'm, I'm trying to sell the joint. <laughs> and now I think I'm going to stay for another couple of years. And I got my son here who's uh, set up in a welding show out the road. He's got a big shed with everything that opens and shuts to, to manufacture things. So uh, I can't run away and leave him. Or well, his mum won't. Birdsville dates back to uh, around 1881 when it was originally known as Diamond Tina Crossing. At its height it had three pubs, one of which is still behind me here, the remnants of anyway. Uh, had a cordial factory, customs house and had a population of around 300. These days it's a bit quieter though, there's one pub down the road here, uh, no cordial factory and a population of around 100. With the sealant now cured overnight, making it probably the least leaky thing under the bonnet, we fired the Defender up nice and early in the morning to catch up with the others. Rather than wait in town with us, the guys had decided to head into the desert for a short way so they can enjoy an extra night of desert camping. We made good progress in the morning, the sun rising over the dunes behind us and lighting up the soft reds and greens of the desert. The Hay River track runs south to north from Popple Corner up to the Plenty Highway at Batten Hill Camp. Before you get there, however, you need to head westwards about 160-odd kilometres along the QAA line from Birdsville, past Air Creek and into the Simpson Desert National Park. So, don't forget your permits for this run. You'll also need to organise permits for the Hay River Track section as well. These can be gained from Joel Fleming, who runs direct four-wheel drive in Alice Springs. Depending on the season, your progress along the QAA line can be slowed up by the conditions of the track. Lots of traffic and vehicles who tend to bash their way up the side of a dune can leave it very rough and scalloped out, slowing your progress a lot and making it a bit harder to get up each dune. Our best tip is air pressures. Let them down a good amount, and this means a bit less than 20 psi for most applications, but it does depend on the size of your tyres and the weight of your vehicle. If you aren't sure, experiment around a bit. If your four-wheel drive is bogging down, it's probably just trying to tell you that tyre pressures are still too high. When you get to Lake Popple, the Hay River track starts in earnest with a right hand turn towards the north. You won't miss this lake, it's pretty incredible. If it's wet, crossing it can be quite a tricky and dangerous affair. Ensure you've got low pressures and have a friend to drag you out. Luckily for us, it was pretty dry. Popple Corner is a fairly fast 20 km run along the lake's edge southwards and would be a very worthwhile diversion if you have the time.
drive northward plonks you right in the middle of a big, smooth swale. The dunes rise and fall on your left and right, but your progress is markedly good to start with. If you've done an east to west run before, this way it does give you a really different perspective of the desert. But you don't drive south to north the whole time. After about 50 k's, you make a fairly sudden right hand turn at Beachcomber Oil Well. Once again, this time from west to east, you're attacking the dunes head on. What I really like about this Hay River run so far is the variety that you get. The first leg you do there is about a 50k run northwards up through a pretty big and vegetated swale and it's really quite different for the desert. Then you turn right at an old oil well and you start doing this run here which takes you up and over a lot of big red rich sand dunes and it's a really interesting and beautiful run. Then we're turning left once again going north so we'll see what happens there. and after a big day of driving, we made camp along the track. Desert camping like this is some of the best you can have out here. With a fire crackling away and dinner in the camp oven, there really isn't another place you'd rather be. The next morning, we were up early, keen to crack on and enjoy the drive. We had to get a gauge of exactly how many Ks we'd covered the night before to see how our progress was going. So out with the map, point some fingers and see how things were traveling. It's always a tough thing to predict. I'd have to recommend trying to include an extra day or two in your own itinerary, instead of trying to be as accurate as possible. Track conditions might slow you down more than you think out here, so it's best to have a little bit of extra time up your sleeve. Just so we're averaging about 20 k's an hour, so that's going to be about eight hours. Thereabouts. Not long after breaking camp, we made it to the intersection of Madigan's camp 16 and 15, bringing back some fond memories of last year's run across the Madigan line. There's a blaze tree here at camp 16. The blaze is pretty hard to spot these days, the tree is mostly grown over it, but it's still a nice spot to have a look, read the plaque, and appreciate the kind of history out here. We signed the book, stretch our legs, gather some firewood, and we're back on our way. After the intersection with the Madigan line, the Hay River track starts to really wind its way through a very vegetated swale. Sometimes you'd almost call it lush. I've been in the desert a few times now, and I have to say, this track has showed us some of the reddest sand I've seen. The track twists and curves through some incredibly stunning desert, making this Hay River run so different from other Simpson Desert tracks. Being able to access this country which was only recently opened up to tourists through the hard work of Joel Fleming and traditional owner Lindsay Bookie, is a real privilege. We drove into the night, making up lost time and pushing on to Lake Caroline. It's situated about 10 k's off the main track towards the west, and if I had only one piece of advice for you, it would be to visit this spot. We were running late and pulled up under the cover of darkness. And when we awoke in the morning, 
we were greeted with an amazing sunrise and incredible view over this dry lake bed. pulled into uh, Lake Caroline last night pretty late and set up camp in the dark and we didn't really know what we were in for in terms of what the lake looked like but let me tell you in the morning it was an incredible experience I mean this big flat barren expanse of baked earth is really actually quite surreal we've just spent a couple of hours here this afternoon kicking the football looking around and sort of appreciating what this kind of place is I mean have a look at it After enjoying the moon-like lake bed for a few hours, we headed back out onto the main track. You have to be careful here crossing the bed of the Hay River. It's actually quite soft through here and can quickly catch you out, especially if your tyre pressures are still a little bit too high. Along the track is a spot called Dingo Well. It's a solar powered water pump that brings up a constant source of water here for the local wildlife. The whole idea behind Dingo Well is that the water is giving the diminishing dingo population a bit of a chance to bounce back. Before all of the Europeans turned up, Indigenous Australians maintained a series of wells and water soaks throughout this country, which also helped sustain water-dependent dingo populations. Since those wells and soaks have started disappearing, so did the dingoes. Being the apex predator in this country, dingoes have a very important role in maintaining biological diversity. They reduce the number of invasive feral animals like cats and pigs, which is beneficial to native animal populations. Seeing how much life was supported out of this spot, and the fact that we saw a dingo having a bit of a nap on the side of the track, I think is a decent rule of thumb that this plan is working well. From Lake Caroline, you're running over 100 kilometres through to Batten Hill Camp. You go past the Tropic of Capricorn on a track that straightens out quite a bit since the previous day. We were a little bit worried that we wouldn't make it through to Batten Hill before sundown, but we took a relatively easy day and got in a couple of hours before dusk. Because the track's so straight and fairly well maintained here, you can keep a pretty decent clip throughout most of it. It allowed us to set up camp, 
kick over the fire and relax a bit. Michelle got a bit of camp oven pizza going that night, which is absolutely delicious. It uses yogurt and flour for a very simple and tasty base, which doesn't take long to put together. All you do is mix up a half kilo tub of yogurt with an equal amount of plain flour. Mix it and knead it together for a few minutes. Roll these out into separate bases and they're done. No need for rising or resting with these. The bases are good to go straight away. We put them straight into a preheated camp oven and started adding our toppings. Firstly a bit of tomato paste, then we throw in some pepperoni, red onions and a nice liberal coating of cheese. Then put it over some moderately hot coals on the campfire. Make sure you check it every now and then though to make sure it's not burning. If you do get it right, the top will be lovely and melted and the base will be quite crunchy. Delicious. While we were here, Tim also knocked up one of his famed dampers, making it look too easy. Two cups of flour, one sachet of yeast, and a can of warm beer gets combined and well kneaded. After leaving it to rise for a couple of hours, give it another quick knead and throw it in the camp oven under a sheet of alfoil. On. Then it's the same case. Chuck it on the campfire, keep an eye on it, and it will come out tops. So we pulled into Batten Hill Camp yesterday afternoon, which kind of signifies for us the end of the Hay River track. We've still got a little bit of driving to do to get up to the Plenty Highway, but in terms of Simpson Desert driving, we're pretty much done. It was a pretty easy drive as well from Lake Caroline yesterday. I think it was a 120 k's or so, but the track did open up a lot more and allowed us to pick up a lot more speed. So if you're worried about timing and making up time, you can do it on this section of track. The next day, the Bush Tucker Tour kicked off from Batten Hill Camp despite a persistent drizzle of rain. Our tour guide for the day was Sherwin, and he was taking us on a big loop drive from Batten Hill out into the surrounding country. It was a nice day of forward driving, even if the weather wasn't so great, and I had a couple of challenging spots thrown in for good measure. Bush tucker was a little bit thin on the ground this time of year, but we did come across some bush bananas, which grow on the vines in this country. So do you cook them up or do you just... Uh, just put it on the uh, coal. Coal, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. cool. Just turn it around until it's soft. Yep. yep. Yeah. And you eat the skin as well? Yeah, uh, skin and the inside eye. Had a white mouth again. Just the inside of it. So you can eat the whole thing, uh, the seeds too? Yeah, yeah. but uh, seeds will be uh, more lighter than this green. It'll be more light green than this. Then it'll be sweet to eat. Would you say you could survive eating just bush bananas? Yeah, uh, yeah, if there's no food. If there's nothing else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, uh, what name do you have for them? Uh, langua. Langua? Yeah. We call it a langua. Do you have to cook it? Yeah. What does it taste like? Uh, much like bananas, but yep. a bit sweeter. Sweeter. The country out here does have a startling beauty. Open plains of short scrub are divided out by big rocky outcrops and stunted mountains. It's a real privilege to come out and just see this country. It's only open to tourism through the traditional owners, and for that, I'm really thankful. 
So there you have it. Our south to north crossing of the Simpson Desert is now finished and it puts you on the plenty highway here when you're all done. That way, roughly 350 k's away, is Alice Springs. But we're heading eastwards through to Boulia in the Channel Country because that's our way home. <laughs>